Hello and welcome! Not welcome back, not welcome back. Let's forget about the last episode. To Sword and Sorcery. Wait, Super Brothers, Sword and Sorcery, EP. So yeah, last episode had some issues. And I think I solved them, maybe, possibly. So it turns out that if you go into the files in your Steam user data folder, you can find a config.txt file and open that up and find a vsync option, which for some reason is not in the settings menu, which it should be. You also find separate uh, audio controls for sound effects and music and stuff like that, which would also be nice to have in here. I'm not sure why it's not in here, but it seems that turning off vsync has fixed the issues, at least for now. So I have over a thousand frames per, per, per second in the menu and like 500 in game. It's totally fine and as it should be. However, I'm getting some tearing effects, but I checked and it doesn't seem like those carry through in the video. So that's great. So we can just go with this. I can bear through it. It's fine. So uh, as you can see, oh, you can see in there as well. Just to, wow, that was weird. Just to show you, I have 2%. This is the progress bar that you get. You probably won't see too much of this because I'll probably just welcome you back in the game itself, not in the menu for the, the rest of the videos. We'll see. But yeah, I'm just going to clear my data and we're actually going to just replay the game and I'm going to reread all the things and we'll probably get much further today. And hopefully it'll all go smoothly and well and all that stuff, so no super long intro this time, no talking about why I'm playing this game or anything, so let's just jump into it. So here we go, click on the dude to make him dance and start the game. Yay. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, how's about you tap these two little sylvan sprites so I can get a feel for your stereo sound system, okay? Everyone be quiet, listen closely, put on your headphones, left. Yeah, that is weird. That doesn't really sound left. It sounds like both ears, but then this one does definitely sound right. That's right for sure, but I don't know, maybe it's just my headphones, I'm not sure. Our research indicates that social support networks will play a significant positive role in the outcome of SS and SEP. I'm not going to use Twitter. I don't have Twitter. I mentioned this last time. I don't want to go into it again, but I don't like Twitter. I'm not going to use Twitter. Note, the ability to broadcast your findings is an ent entirely optional component of SS and SSS EP. It is intended to be used in moderation. We are profoundly grateful that you have chosen to participate in this experimental treatment for acute soul sickness. You'll find this first SS and SS EP session to be fairly straightforward. It typically, typically only requires 15 to 30 minutes to complete. Ready to begin? Press play and let's go. Great. 900 FPS. Sounds about right. Sounds pretty good. Here we are. So yeah, you can drag, drag around the, the view to look around. You can double click to move. You can zoom in and out with the scroll wheel, but you can also do it with the minus and plus keys, apparently. So that's cool. And we can start looking at things, so let's look at our dog. Pet him, and then he leads us somewhere. So you tip-tap to walk, but you can also just hold it, and then you'll walk whichever direction you point it. We'll learn about that later, but it's fine for now, so let's just start looking at things. We spied a few worthless sheep lacing around in the meadow. For some reason, this protagonist uses the collective... Is it pronouns? No, I don't even know. But anyway, she just says we for whatever reason. We spied an oddly shaped stick overlooking the meadow. In the meadow, there was an immovable iron gate blocking a cavernous cave. We spied a thingamajig above the iron gate. We spied an angry bird sculpture looming above the meadow. Let's see, there's no... Oh right, the sun. Yeah, we can vividly remember how awesome the sun looked on that particular early spring day. And there's no moon in sight, but we'll get to that. 
So let's talk to the girl. It's a girl, apparently. I thought this was like an old man at first, but it's a girl. From the war-ravaged depths of Scythia, we met a dark-haired girl in a sunlit meadow. To the mountain folk of the Caucasus... Caucasus, I don't know. I'm gonna say Caucasus, probably. Or it'll probably just vary every time. We'll see. She was known as Girl, and she seemed nice. Thanks, girl. We can't talk to her again. We just says the same thing. So it's time to just move on. Okay, I want to try something here. I don't think this is going to work, but I read about this. No. Okay, so I think I think you have to do that later in the game. We'll see. Apparently there's a way to like kill those loot. What are they called again? I want to say Luger Morphs, but that's not it, I think. I have Lago Morphs? No clue. Let's just start looking at stuff again. We spied a solidly built water well with a broad wooden roof. Can I do something with it? Oh! No. Okay, damn, I thought I found something. Yeah, too bad. Doesn't seem like it. Hi, doggy. And look at this. We spied a sturdy stone hut with a roof of thatch that stood beside a deep water pond. Home is where the hearth is. Clever puns. Okay, that's the same. Just wanted to check. Moon! Yeah, it's still around full moon. We'll see as the game goes on if it even takes that long, but... Would be kind of interesting to see if the moon phases shift, because apparently they're gonna shift in real time, and this is actually indicative of the real world date moon phase thing. I don't know. Let's enter his house. And check. Can I sit on this stool? Yeah, I can. I sat on this one last time. Inside the hut, we spied a little round something or other above the hearth. Oh, no. Check it. Inside the hut, the hearth was quietly crackling with familiar warmth. You can't check the moon in here, and that's about it, so let's exit. Oh, wait! Huh, I didn't even notice this before, but you can see the health. Huh, could you do that? I guess so, and this is just to go to the main menu, not to tweet, like I thought. But you can tweet after basically everything in this game. We spied a pile of wood. Wood? No, wait. We spied a... Spied? Spied a pile of chopped firewood. No big deal. It is a big deal. I can't say it. Jesus. Yeah, that's about it. So wait, again, let's just try this. No. Alright. Probably later on. We'll see. Huh? The wood chopping woodsman chopped wood. To the mountain folk of the Caucasus, he was known as Logfella, and he seemed cool. Logfella knew all about our woeful errand, but we don't and he agreed to lead us up to the old road, or up the old road. Still, we definitely got the feeling that he wasn't super jazzed about this. And watch, as there are no frame drops when he puts on his stupid backpack. 700 FPS, well we dropped 200, but I guess we can live without those 200 frames per second. So, pretty cool, great. Haven't really even seen any tearing so far, but... I did notice some while testing, so it'll probably happen, but Morning. should be fine. Morning. The woodsman waited for us to continue along the path to the start of the old road. Sure. Let's go. Check the shrine thing. We spied a curious-looking nest box with an inscription that read, that read, Tweet and ye shall be retweeted. And you can tweet it, but I'm not going to tweet it. I wouldn't even be able to if I wanted to. So, I'm just going to check if I go this way instead. Is there anything I can do? I like that. Hmm. 
doesn't seem to be anything here. Weird. Maybe that's something later on, or maybe it's just a random dead end. Who knows? Oh, by the way, I also found out that you can use the W, A's, and D keys to move the camera. I probably won't too much, but still, just kind of useful. The woodsman confirmed 100% that he had the only key to the locked door in the stone wall. It was a really nice looking key. We were totally ready to just tap and hold on the path ahead to move it, move it, move it. So yeah, there we go. Tutorial for how to move just through the path without having to click all the time. But let's look at this first. Scythia, Sumeria, Assyria, and Persia. These are all kingdoms of men. Mingita is the kingdom of the cloud, which is apparently where we're heading, I think. Mingita, the tomb, Mingita something? I don't know. Once again, I have to mention, this really reminds me of Flashback, the music. It's really nice. If you get this game on Steam, you actually get the uh, soundtrack as well, and it's really good. I actually love the soundtrack. I haven't wanted to listen to it too much because I don't want to hear all the songs before I play them in the game, so we'll probably get to that at some point. Astride a log bridge on the old road stood a grim flagpole adorned with blocky-looking skulls. I can't check anything else, right? don't think so. Is the moon looking different from what it was in the last video? I guess I can compare, but I don't think so. There's the beast that we fought last time, or I mean, we didn't, because there was no last time, haha! -ha. We spied a collection of graves in a thicket to the side of the old road, and we wondered what was up with that. So, what if I look at this thing? Nope, stop. Okay, I don't want to do that. Let's just talk to them. Hi! Hello. The woodsman had seen some kind of creepy monster thing, and he figured he'd just let us handle it. My dog? Just pet him. By the side of the old road, there was a lot of flickering on the screen that you won't see, but I should stop talking about that. I won't mention it, but holy crap, that was some intense flickering. There was a stone carved stone carved with a pair of glyphs in the shape of a sword and a shield. Great! So here we go, combat system, which I also learned something about. You right click to drag your sword or pull out your sword, unsheathe your sword, but then apparently, yeah, you can use Z and X to uh, swing and block instead of clicking on these, so yeah, there we go. So that's actually a lot easier in my opinion. I mean, this was made for, I think, like iOS or iPad or iPhones or something. I don't even know. But, so you have to be able to tap at things. But using said next is a lot easier in my opinion. So I'm going to be using that, probably. I also saw on the FAQ that if you hold your shield for 8 seconds, you actually start regening health. So kind of handy if you're ever in trouble. So we'll see if I need that. Nope, start walking. I almost feel like I should lower the sound effects a bit more. The sounds are pretty... pretty overwhelming sometimes. I can look at this. We spied a weathered-looking nest box that looked kind of like a face in a creepy way. Thus. And yeah, we're... where we left off. Well, I didn't leave off here, but I left off the other screen, so we're past that point already. And we can even continue on a little bit. So there's something to look at down here, which we'll do. Yeah, the music is really nice. On a side path leading away from the old road, yeah, that was correct, was a stone cart with series, with series of indecipherable glyphs. Amid the indecipherable glyphs, we spied a series of lunar pictograms. 
So, my first instinct about this is that this door won't open unless it's a specific moon phase, maybe? Which is what the whole cheating about the... There's an achievement for cheating your date and time setting to do something, I don't know exactly, to get the correct lunar phase. Maybe that's what this is about, I don't know. A locked door hid in the forest underbrush below the old road that led up leads up to Mingi Taw. Yeah, and nothing else we can do. Everything is so smooth and nice, though. No frame drops in sight. We'll see once we get into some more intense stuff if there are any frame drops. Hopefully not. Hopefully not. Okay, so stuff to look at. We can probably look at a lot of stuff here. We spy the solitary grave at the edge of the perilous preci precipice. And we wondered what was up with that. We wondered what was up with a lot of things, apparently. To one side of the perilous precipice stood a wondrous dolmen thing that sheltered two comfortable-looking stone seats. Oh, so you can sit down? We'll probably sit down. Let's just look at stuff first. Atop a huge rock-hewn sculpture stood a grim flagpole creepily adorned by blocky-looking... with blocky-looking skulls. Or something like that. Rainbow? We can vividly remember how awesome the sun looked. Nope, not that. I wanted to check the, the rainbow. I guess not. At the perilous precipice was a huge rock-hewn sculpture of a familiar-looking head with mouth agape. And we can't look at anything specific like his beard. Too bad. Alright, so what about... This thing. No, nope, I don't want to go there, because it's probably what's... I, I remember this. It's something about holding your sword skyward, and then... Thing opens. I remember this from when I played it, but... We'll, we'll get to that. Let's just sit down on the stone... Seats. Because why not? Hmm. Well, I don't think anything is happening, but I do remember something about sitting down. I think that's in a later chapter. We'll see. Let's talk to Logfella. Yes, thank you. You've seen this. And he just leaves? Oh no, he goes up to sit. Of course. And the dog. Wait, wasn't that our dog? Or is yeah, it his dog? I don't really have much to say either. Uh, huh. Oh. That's cool. What did he say? You don't really have much to say either? Yeah, That's cool? Why don't, we just, why don't we just enjoy the quiet? Okay. Sure. Apparently not. The woodsman known as Logfella had chosen to chill out beneath a stone shelter near the perilous per precipice. God damn it, the fucking tongue twisting in this. Logfella seemed to know all about the loathsome rainbow and the, the nearby glyphs depicting the skyward sword. Hint, hint. And yet Logfella offered zero help about what to do next, which kind of rubbed us the wrong way if we're being totally honest. It's fine, I know what to do. No, I wanted to check the, the dog. I guess not. Stop it. Can I check the dog? Uh, what do you think about blood sports? Everyone likes blood sports, right? Blood sports? I, I heard that uh, they're, they're building a place downtown. Um, some kind of uh, place to see people get killed by animals, beasts, oh. and stuff. That sounds neat. Yeah, sounds like a lot of fun. Especially for the people, and the animals. Yeah, there we go, pet him. Sweet. Alright, let's just move on. 
At the edge of the perilous precipice stood a stone carved with a glyph of a skyward sword beneath the colors of a rainbow. We Scythians loathe the rainbows. But we can just go here, and then hold right click, and then hold up our sword. Oh my god, so epic! Do I need to do it more? Apparently not. Okay. Yeah, that was it. Okay. Say, ah. Oh, is he gonna join me? Whoa. Was that a cheer? I guess so. We had bridged the chasm and we felt super smart. We told Logfella that we sought a burdensome book of sinister sorcery known as the Megatome. The Megatome lurked somewhere in the haunted darkness beyond the perilous precipice beneath Mingi Ta. We resolved to go get the Megatome and then get out alive. And he's just gonna say, I, yeah, that's cool. I guess. No, not that. Stop it. Let's just talk with him one more time. The woodsman known as Logfella was just going to wait here for us to return with a Megatome. Sure, great. Yeah, I, I think I would end it here, but I think I'll keep going a little bit more just to sort of make it up because we haven't really done much this episode so far. Tap and hold to move, I know. It's a spooky dungeon. Oh, that, that was it. Astride a rickety bridge stood a grim pole creepily adorned with an antlered skull. Oh man, there's a lot of flickering in this screen. Yeah, we'll see how bad that gets, but... I can deal with it. I can deal with it more than the frame drops, that's for sure. Let's check this. Above the rock-cut entrance to a mountain temple, we spied a pictographic representation of the Trigon Trifecta. We'll learn more about that later on, don't you worry. Can't really look at anything else, so let's just keep moving. Yeah, Jesus Christ, the screen is flickering like mad. Check the books. Apparently not. Hi. This isn't foreboding at all. In a subterranean corridor, we spied an ominous statue, but we didn't worry too much about it. Ah... Uh, didn't we? Alright. Once again, I know what's gonna happen, and you do too, it's kind of fucking obvious, but... still. So there's three entrances. Okay. Guess we'll take the right one. Hopefully it's not the wrong one. Ha ha! Deep within the mountain temple, above a tall passageway, we spied three strange tri blah, triangu blah, blah, triangular shapes. Jesus. And I can't check the fence, or grate. And this is gonna take us out, and we just have to go into the main entrance. Still nothing, but we can go left or right. And apparently I can't really check anything in here. Can go straight up as well, but we'll do that later on. Oh, I'm just back here. What happens if I just leave now? Is it meant to just be a loop, or is it like... Yeah, probably just a loop. Huh. Maybe something later on again? Who knows? Or maybe it's just there to... Oh, I thought there was some eyes. Maybe it's just to reinforce that this place is mysterious and magical and stuff. 
And again, surely doesn't look suspicious at all. Oh, I might actually have been remembering wrong about what happens, because now... I'm seeing something else. We'll see. We'll see. I don't quite remember everything. We spied a pictographic representation of the Trigon Trifecta in the darkness between beneath Mingi Ta. We spied an antlered skull floating in the darkness beneath Mingi Ta. Okay. And the Megatome. I'll be having that. We found the Megatome clasped in two bone hands, and we felt our sword stir in its sheath. Oh dear. Okay. I'm sure this won't end poorly. Oh, hey, look, its eyes are glowing. We spied an antlered skull. Yeah, we did. And I got the Megatome. So, I don't remember if you can, like, fight this guy or anything. I don't think so. But we'll try it. Ah. I see. And you just restart. Okay, makes sense. That's not too bad, then. That's not even... a punishment. So just don't let him touch you. And that's all. Oh, I might know the looping thing. Maybe if I go down here? No, I thought he would come from this way and then you had to like loop around to get behind him, but nope. Just run. So, let's see the statue now. It'll probably try to kill us. No. Okay, well, let's not worry too much about it. Never mind. Oh, is he gonna, like, possess the statue? Probably. Fight! Oh, yeah, okay. Okay, simple block and then hit. I can't do that. I also want to slam my sword into my shield. Ba-bam. Come at me. Oh, I thought I had to, like, block three times because it sort of made it seem like that. And then sheath the sword. And run. I guess. So was that an illusion? Who knows. And the tongue is still here. I was thinking maybe it would retract. I mean, I remember some things, but I don't remember everything. And I don't remember details about it either. It's like Pit Underground. I remember things when they happen, but not before. Hi! I got the thing! It's fine, don't worry about it. That's not like a massive curse on the entire world or anything, right? We had retrieved the Megatome, and Lockfella was 100% ready to move it, move it, move it, to the safety of his lodgings. We sensed a gathering thunderstorm, and yet a little song began in our hearts. Well, I don't think I can continue anymore. I think the chapter is almost over, but there is more stuff when you get back to the cabin, as far as I remember. So, I'm gonna leave it here. I think saving works very, like instantly, so when we quit, we will probably just be back here, I hope, so time to test that out, I guess. So, that was a bit of a better first episode, I suppose, if you even want to call it that, so I hope you enjoyed, and 
I'll see you next time in Super Brothers! Finally, I can play the game! For real! See you next time! Bye-bye!